Welcome to the land of Cal Torlin. The Warlock Lord, once banished to his prison, has broken free, slain all but one of the Circle of Twelve Wizards, and plans to release the power of the Behemoth on the land, plunging it into darkness forever. You are a group of adventurers that venture into Castle Shadowgate to confront the Warlock Lord and thwart his plans. And though you are working together to bring down the Warlock Lord, solving puzzles, defeating monsters, and completing quests will reward you with XP points. And whoever has the most XP points at the end of the game will be crowned High Lord of the Westland. Setting the game up is as easy as putting all the shuffled card stacks and tokens on their respective spots on the board. Set two black dice aside on opposite sides of the table for easy reach. Put the torch token on the number 10 of the torch track, and a lock token on the second and third quest stacks. Each player chooses a character to play, and takes the player mat and character token for that character, and puts it in front of them. There are four player mats, but each side has another character, totaling eight different characters to play. The characters with the yellow star next to their name usually have a more balanced base trait set. The ones without generally have a more proficient trait. We usually ask new players to choose one with the yellow star, just to start out. Set aside the Cavern Stairwell event from the first quest stack. Shuffle the stack and play the top four cards on the active quest spots. Then shuffle the Cavern Stairwell event with the rest of the quest one cards and place them on their space. The game is effectively set up for starting the game. Now let's talk about you, the player. First, the three icons on the left side are your character's base traits. The shield is a symbol for strength. The X pattern icon is for the character's resourcefulness. And the sun icon is for the character's mental trait. These will be considered when attempting to complete quests. The next thing to point out is the character's standard ability. This is either something that happens at the start of the game, or is something that can be triggered in some way. For instance, Catalia Mar starts the game with two elemental tokens of your choice. While a character like Willemir can at any time use an elemental token as any type, like a wild card when spending them to complete quests. Each character has a unique ability that aligns with their character's class. At this point, I would ask all players to roll two black dice. Each die will result in a 1, a 2, or a skull, which is considered a 0. Whoever rolls the highest gets to go first. If there's a tie for the highest, those players re-roll until one player comes out on top. Then, starting with the first player and going clockwise from there, each player will draw two item cards from the item card stack. Everyone will place them face up in their inventory. Some people have found it easier to align their inventory cards at the bottom of their playmat, just to make it easier to see all of them. I'd like to have you pay attention to the item cards that you just drew. These cards can boost your traits, help you pay for a quest cost, or affect gameplay in some form or fashion. If the card has a shield in the top left of the ability box, these items need to be equipped for them to grant you their ability. However, if the item card has no shield and has a treasure chest icon in the upper left, this is a general item and cannot be equipped. These you'll place straight from your inventory. For those that are colorblind, there are a few indicators to help you distinguish them. First, and probably the easiest way is, the item type is specified at the top of the item card. It will be Relic, Weapon, Magic, or General. The second is the shield symbol next to the ability box, matches the symbol on the player mat, as the Relic has a square in the middle of the shield, a weapon has a triangle, and Magic has a circle. Lastly, the icon in the upper left can help differentiate the item's type. Relics have a diamond, a goblet, or a staff, signaling a royal, artifact, or staff relic. The weapon items have a suit of armor, crossed swords, or a flurry of arrows to signal an armor, melee, or ranged weapon. And the magic items are either fire, ice, or wind, with those icons signaling those types. Each item type also has a wild card for that particular type. The symbol for a wild card is an eight-pointed star. If you get one of these cards, it's considered every type for that category of item, except a staff item, and can be spent as such. These are fairly powerful items worth a lot of XP and have powerful abilities. Use them carefully. During your turn, you will equip items by placing them in the spot above your player mat in the respective spots. Each character can differ in what they can be equipped with at any given time, but if you can fill all four equipped item spots, you unlock a unique ability your character can perform once per game. You'll do this by flipping the token over so it shows the shield icon with the star in the middle. Once the token is flipped over, you gain the fully equipped ability and cannot lose it, even if you become unequipped again. 
Again, it can be used once per game, and each character has a different ability, so get to know the characters a bit and see what they can do to better strategize subsequent plays. Shadowgate the Living Castle is a progressive game, meaning you can't walk in the front door and head straight for the Warlock Lord. Where's the fun in that? No, you'll have to progress through Castle Shadowgate first by traversing its caverns in the Quest 1 cards, and when the adventurers come to the cavern stairwell, you get to unlock the next quest stack, the Quest 2 Keep cards. When you get to the Banquet Hall, you'll then unlock the third quest stack, the Towers and the Mines, and when you get to the Great Barrier, the final quest will begin. Note, the quests do get more difficult, but can be more rewarding as you progress through the castle. But wait, we can't just take on the Warlock Lord or Behemoth with our bare hands, no. Anyone familiar with the game Shadowgate knows that there is a powerful weapon known as the Staff of Ages that can defeat the Warlock Lord, but it was broken down into three parts, and as you can see, there are three Staff Item cards. One piece resides in the caverns, one resides in the keep, and one resides somewhere in the towers and mines. So you're not just speedrunning to the final battle, you'll need to have all three pieces amongst all the players before the final quest can begin. If you come to the Great Barrier without all three in your party's possession, it will go to the bottom of the quest 3 stack and the hunt will continue. Staff items are considered relic items, so they can be equipped in the relic spot of your player map. But if you get more than one of the staff items in your possession, you can stack them in the same spot for a cumulative bonus. Each one gives you a plus one to one of your traits, depending on which one you get. So this can be helpful to have more than one. Plus, the staff items are worth 25 XP points a piece that get added to your XP total at the end of the game. In short, get a staff item if you can. There are four types of quest cards. The black or gray bordered quest cards are standard quests. Completing these quests tend to give you item cards and elemental tokens to boost your character's base traits. The green bordered quest cards are the monster quests. Completing these will give a player a puzzle item, and possibly items or elemental tokens as well. The puzzle items are used for our next quest type. The puzzle quests are the purple bordered quests and can only be completed if you have the puzzle item that can solve it. Solving puzzle quests are some of the most lucrative ways to gain XP. When you solve them, you put the puzzle item and the puzzle quest into your completed quest stack for an additional 20 XP points. That's a lot. We make it easy for new players to find their puzzle quests by looking at their puzzle item. In the area above the XP point marker, there is a 1, a 2, or a 3, signaling which quest stack that puzzle quest resides in. This keeps new and experienced players on the same level. Oh, and if you get a puzzle item, don't show people what you have. You can look for yourself, but showing others which puzzle item you have can work against you, as you'll soon find out. The last quest card type is an event. Events are not actually quests, but something that happen immediately or for a duration. Just follow the text on the event, and it should walk you through whatever is going on. Dijin Riddles Well, when a quest stack gets unlocked, the Dijin being held captive inside of Castle Shadowgate proposes a riddle to all the players. Flip one of these cards over, and you'll see the riddle and the answer to that riddle. Whatever the answer is, during any player's action or resolve phase, if you have the card that answers that riddle, you can discard that card to the discard pile and then take that riddle. Not only will it give you an additional 10 XP points, but it will also give you quite a boost in the game. The reward for answering the riddle is on the bottom of the card. You might get a bunch of items, elemental tokens, maybe bump the torch back to 10, or get a redo on a roll. These are just a few of the possible rewards.